it was shock for many of us. A woman very supportive of her husband. A woman, in fact, I would call her the two bedfellows. You cannot see Almira without seeing the wife. And the woman was mother to the motherless, mother to everybody, all they can hurry. She represents too many things to too, too many people. She was never discriminatory, always welcoming. Accept and relate with everybody as if they are equals and as if they have value. She was a homemaker, you know, uh, a homemaker, caring, virtuous, you know, describe her by any standard, she's everything a man would look for in a woman. She's a great woman. She is so loving. She has this love like a childlike manner. I'll say that she's adorable. She's so amiable. I want to say that she's a woman to be emulated. If you're looking at a woman of God to tow the path that she took, she's an example of the believer. Her humility, of her kindness, of her being down to earth, and, her, and over and above all, her commitment to the work of the Lord, to the work of the ministry, her commitment to excellence, a commitment to being a good example of what a mother in the house of God should be. The Proverbs 31 woman, unassuming, loving, caring, very humble, down to earth, approachable, somebody who will listen to you, very cheerful, I cannot forget that. When you are talking with Mama Dorothy, she's all smiles. Thanks and very encouraging. She's a woman that will always encourage you and very committed to the things of God. She was a gem and she was very obedient, a very obedient wife, very humble wife. She loved her husband to a fault. She loved her family. She did everything to make sure that her marriage worked. She was an exceptional woman. Her love, her care, her passion for God. Humility is her watchword. Love and the eagerness to serve God. She was a wonderful woman, very hardworking woman, very virtuous woman. And I believe that God has blessed her and God has helped her and she has left a lot of legacy behind. And uh, being a school proprietor and uh, being an active uh, member of the church and also of the full gospel, she has left a lot of legacy. She had a lot of people on her scholarship scheme. And wonderful woman, a woman that is to be emulated. And she, with her humility, diligence, she's kind and giving because they gave a sanctuary entirely built for worship, for the work of God. If your wife is not behind you in it, you can't do it. She is a, the jewel of inestimable value to her husband. And I say that her children call her blessed. And so for every other woman, I would say that is where we all want to be. We all want to emulate that humility in her. You know, she's a proprietress of a school, so that makes her a firm woman. But in that firmness, you can see warmth and you can see kindness, which she expressed to even her, when we speak, the, the children in school, the parents of the children in school, and how she would help with school fees and, you know, give some rebates and, and all of that, so that children can come to school when it was difficult for their parents. I would say that she is virtuous in all her ways. The pillar of the home and indeed a homemaker that actually had made this very home most comfortable for all of us that are not only so close to the family but within the neighborhood. 
she had a kind heart and she had a willing heart she had a very cheerful heart very hospitable person I'm talking about uh, we found her very easily approachable and uh, hospitable at all times she served God and humanity she's an encourager she's a pillar of support for the home and other people and she's a God praiser she's a God celebrator it's something everybody should do should emulate Mrs. Ebaleme has been a pillar of support she has been a constant person in our fellowship I want to say the only elderly woman that attends our fellowship and that's a great inspiration to the coming younger ladies around. Is this a woman that was given to humility, given to the work of God, and in fact she loves her family so dearly. Her sense of humility is very, very high. Hardly can you understand whether she is a woman of that high status because she served even in the fellowship she will see her serving and she, 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 she relates with most of the couples there and uh, some of us that are young compared to their age we feel so important we feel so uh, relieved when we meet with her and she carries everybody along with her i remember her as very kind I'm very passionate about the work of God and they're very hospitable. Um, very, and of course, somebody that always wants to go out of their way, along with her husband, to do things for you. I saw humility. I saw en endurance. She endured things. Mommy, she doesn't talk. Whatever that comes on her way, she have, I've seen Christ in her an amiable lady who has touched lives in many areas of in the society. That you look at her, you don't think she can even raise a finger. But she's quite firm, was quite humble, peaceful, gentle. She was a friend most people who meet her. She represents the apt description that behind every successful man there is a woman. She was really an Amazon that made Ebalame what she is. He is. Even in the book of Ebalame which he wrote from south to the castle, Ebalame reflected the fact that at the beginning of his life she, he was, she was the one who shaped him. And Ebalame is a very respected member of the society. And both of them look like a couple that you cannot remove apart. She represents a typical pure woman. Humble, articulate, always having a reserved position behind. She was uh, a perfect gift uh, to this generation. And uh, what is also important to some of us is that she lived a righteous life while on earth. And uh, she was also very accommodating. Uh, her doors were open for every type of people, and she was ready to help as much as, uh, as she can. She's such a supportive wife to the husband. The husband is a very serious minister of God, and this woman has stood with him throughout. So whatever he does, she is with him. And that is what makes Rear Admiral, very, very, very committed to the things of God. She's a lady who treats you and deals with you the way you are. She has no tribal or any kind of affiliation. She just sees you as a human being and she deals with you. When you come, she's, you go into her house, she's moving, oh, would you like to have this? Would you like to have that? I just wish more Nigerians we have that type of spirit, a spirit of humility, uh, a spirit of receiving everybody the way they are. She's a very accommodating woman, a quiet, unassuming, and uh, you always see her with her husband, 
So that means she's very cooperative with the husband. And uh, in the work of the fellowship, I can say it that uh, both herself and the husband, they are real typical full God's women. And for the rear admiral to have gotten to the level she is today, it is through the support of the wife. I saw her as a mother. In a mother, there are many things that make up a mother. You see compassion, you see love, you see care, you have understanding, and uh, somebody that is ready to go all the way with you. Those things were the embodiment, what made her, we see her as mommy. This woman has been very, very helpful and humble herself with all humility. And whenever you come her way, you can hardly find any moment she frank her face or get angry or get tired. And this is what my brother will feel that much of a truth is a God-choosing wife for our brother. She fought a good fight. She was always upright, always believing God for going through everything. She had faith, fullness of faith. She was loving. She was a kind woman. Mommy is someone that is, um, is a true Christian in every area of the world, a practicing Christian. She loved the Lord with all her heart. When I think of Princess Mrs. Dorothy Balleme, there's only one phrase that comes to my mind, and that is that she was a woman of a gentle and quiet spirit. It was a great quality that I believe must have been behind the success and the victories and the achievement in the family of Rear Admiral Peter Balleme. She is, she's humble to a fault. Not until you enter her home, you will not know that she is a woman of affluence. You wouldn't know that she has much and she's a quiet person. Even in appearance, you'll see her going her way quietly. She was very, very good. A virtuous woman. Real mother. I am from Borno State. But she took me and my husband in. She was a mother per excellence. A wife per excellence. She was detribalized. Mommy was so good. She was an organizer behind the scene. You know, Ray Admara is the person who talks and uh, drives men our own is to sit down and make things happen behind the scene. That was exactly how she impacted our lives. She was a source of encouragement to several women who today are established on their own. Because you know in the emphasis, senior officers' wives encourage younger officers' wives. They lead them by example, they show them what they do. Not only in terms of how they manage their home, how they bring up their children, but also how they take care of their husbands. She is highly approachable. She is somebody that uh, does not really segregate between this one or that one. She's so hospitable. She's so accommodating. She never made you feel uh, unwanted. She, she, she went out to make you feel very, very comfortable in her home, whatever she had, she gave. She lived a life of service to God. She supported her husband to raise godly children. She was a very hospitable person, very accommodating and very industrious. As a very, very loving woman, an educationist, a nurse, and uh, over and above all, a princess. She decided to put those three qualities into to, to, to beer. And that is how she's so accommodating, very hospitable. And uh, she's always, you know, wanting to do good things to, 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 to people. It's a lady that loves Christ. She's a lady that is, you can have by yourself. She's dependable. She's trustworthy. She's inspiring. That's the kind of lady we want to have around us. You can pick humility from her and know and build on it and you will know that this is the thickness that we, we have all known before, we used to know. One thing about her is she doesn't 
see black and call it white. If you go wrong, she will step her foot down and tell you that you went wrong, irrespective of, of who source is called. And she was very humble. You won't, uh, she will not just behave like a big man's wife. She's an extremely loyal woman. She's a very strong woman, very strong personality. And her wisdom had no bounds because she knew how to give you advice. And if there was anything I was worried about, she was the best person to go and speak to. She gave me sound advice that I still use till today, obviously, for my days. I will always remember how she has treated me. I was her daughter. There was no doubt about it. Mom was the rock. She was the foundation in which our home was built. You know, she was everything to us. She was a teacher. She was a father. She was a mother. Because um, most of the times, dad was hardly ever around because of the military posting. So she had to take on that role. And um, I would miss a lot of things. I would miss everything about my mother. Most importantly, I would miss um, her coming first thing in the morning to make sure my kids are ready to go to school. And, um, you know, her always wondering, making sure my wife is out of the bathroom to go to work. You know, there's just so much um, we will miss because she was our world. Big Mama, as I would fondly call her, wasn't just a mother to me. She was my favorite person in the world. She was one person that I could always rely on. She was my support system, basically, you know. Um, she was easy to talk to, like she was my mother, but I could literally tell her everything without fear of being judged, you know. That's not to say that she was, she was quite tough. She was firm, you know. She would scold you, she would yell at you, you know. She would tell you how she feels when you do something wrong, but um, she always had a way of making things feel better. You are a great mom. You are, you are my rock, you are my strength. You motivated me even when I was down and out, and I love you so much, mom. I really do. She was a fantastic mother to me, to her children. She was a fantastic grandmother. And we are really, really going to miss you, Mommy. We love you. We're so lucky to have had you in our lives. And we will forever, forever cherish the moments and cherish the memories we have of you. She's my precious jewel. She's my life. She's everything. But the consolation, the truth is that the consolation that you see for nearly uh, three decades, we put we have lived our life for Christ. And um, I saw a fulfilled life. The greatest joy I have is that I was there. I saw it all throughout. Went through her travel. 24 7, the world. Come to Domi, which was about passing on. I never knew, but I, because we are all the time, we have no faith. I knew that God, there's no situation God can reverse. And I know that uh, most of it after prayers, praise worship. We are just, we're just praising God. This time she's got stroke, she cannot talk. Sometimes when we finish, I say, to prove that she's hearing me, I say, squeeze my hand, she squeeze her hand, and then she's okay. And so we're just praising God. All of a sudden, I saw something like, from my direction, it looks like a light from my direction on the bed, across the bed, on the head. I, I wouldn't know what to call it light or lightning. So it was a bright light. As I, I thought I, I stopped dancing, I went, squeezed my hand, 
couldn't do that. The hand fell down. I knew the end was come. And uh, I called the nurse to confirm. She didn't talk to me. She didn't talk to me. She just went to call the doctor. And I was just dancing. I was rejoicing. I knew what I saw. I alone saw it. No doctor, no nurse. I was, I was left there alone. And I knew that this left her in glory. I was still dancing. When the doctor came, when they came, they were at the, the door. Four, four doctors, they waited for me. When I saw them, I stopped praising God. After, the, after they have finished their medical checks, they said, do I know what has happened? I said, of course, she's going to be with the Lord. Praise the Lord. The doctor said, do you say he's, he's your husband? Because I saw her good in glory. Mommy, you showed us immense love and care, uncommon among women. We miss you, Mommy. And we know that we shall see you again. It would be a joyous reunion. We love you, but Jesus loves you the most. Continue to rest in the bosom of the Lord till we meet to part no more. Mom will love you. We always will. We know you're in a good place. You're in heaven. You're watching over us. We just want you to know, which we already know you do know, that um, your legacy will live on. We would continue as a family and um, all what you stood for. We just want to thank you for your love, your kindness, and um, thank you for everything you are, and we love you. The Lord will strengthen the family, the Lord will console the family, and the Lord will give them the fortitude to withstand the shock. But praise the Lord. It's such a wonderful time. Today, celebrating the life of a late elder Mrs. Uh, Dorothy Ebalime, who has been of great impact and blessing to quite a number of people here and uh, is our world generally. Today, a lot of eulogies, commendations, and tributes must have been made on her. But I want us to pick some quick lessons on how she lived her life uh, by remarking that we should all be concerned about what we leave behind. Life is a period, and a short one for that matter, that all of us have to spend here. One day, no matter for how long, we'll all be gone out of here. But there are two vital things that are crucial. Number one is the name you leave behind. A person may die, but name does not die. Name represents integrity. There are names that according to scriptures is rotten. According to Proverbs chapter 10, verse 7, that the memory of the just is always sweet, but the name of the wicked will rot. I pray that none of us here today will have our names rotten. Today, Mrs. Dorothy Ebaleme sounds sweet to the memory of all, beginning with our children and of course her husband and the entire large family, the community where she grew and the church where she lived and served. The big question is what will you be remembered for? Name is better than fame. Fame cannot make a name, but name can give you high integrity rated name. Don't make money at the expense of your name. Don't make fame at the expense of your name. Don't make anything material at the expense of your name. Your name will take you beyond what your lifespan took you. So go for a name. Second lesson I want us to look at is on works. The Word of God tells us that when we no more hear, what remains is the works we have done. The works of our hands. Revelation chapter 14 
Verse 13, he said, Blessed are those who died in the Lord. Their works will keep speaking about them. Their works will open the door for their children and everybody around them. There are seven remarkable churches that Jesus spoke to in Revelation. And of all the seven, all of them have one common denominator. Jesus said, I know your works. Repeatedly to each of these churches, Revelation chapter 2, verse 2, verse 9, verse 13, 19. And of course in chapter 3, verses 1, 8, and 15. Specifically in verse 8, he said, I know your works. Therefore, as a result of your works, I will open doors to you which no man can shut. When we are no more, our works keep opening doors for people that we are identified with, beginning with our children. Well, to all of the people who celebrate today the life of Elder Mrs. Dorothy Ebalene, please go with these two thoughts in your reflection. A good name, which according to scriptures, again in Proverbs 22, verse 1, and Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 1, better than gold, better than silver, better than anything you can think of in life. This is important, especially in this generation of deep corruption, where people have turned corruption to fashion within our nation and beyond. Please go for name. Register your name for the future of your children and let the works of your hand keep speaking. Name for integrity works for impact. Are you impacting lives or you are consuming everything to yourself? Full of greed and selfishness? Let's go from here with this reflection today. I pray that God will bless every one of us and particularly the family left behind Elder Peter Bademy, a man dedicated, committed to the Lord and services of the church and humanity and all of the children, their spouses and grandchildren. The Lord will keep all of you as one family and as you keep loving the Lord, following the Lord the way your mother did, please keep on the faith. Someday, we'll meet together at the feet of Jesus. God bless everyone, all of the loved ones, family members, friends who have come to celebrate this moment. It shall remain well with you in Jesus' name. Amen.